Imagine a world thrown into sudden, silent chaos. It's a normal Tuesday, until it's not. Your GPS cuts out mid-commute. Global financial markets freeze. Pilots lose contact with air traffic control. And across the world, the most powerful military on Earth goes blind and deaf, its eyes and ears in the sky, its entire satellite network, having simply winked out of existence. This isn't just a scene from a sci-fi movie. It's the potential reality of a war won in the first few minutes, and a recent technological breakthrough in China suggests they're one step closer to building the very weapon that could start it. For decades, military strategists have dreamed of a holy grail weapon a beam of directed energy that could hit targets at the speed of light. No more missile trajectories, no more trying to outsmart enemy defenses. Just point, shoot, and eliminate. The most ambitious version of this idea has always been the particle beam weapon, a stream of atoms or subatomic particles, juiced up to near light speed, designed to destroy a target with pure energy. But there's always been a catch, a fundamental engineering dilemma that's kept this weapon in the realm of science fiction. A particle beam weapon needs two things that historically don't go together, an almost unbelievable amount of power, and microscopic, nanosecond-level precision. Systems that can pump out megawatts of power are usually big and clumsy. Systems with ultra-fine control just can't handle that kind of raw energy. You could have power, or you could have precision, but you couldn't have both. Intel just maybe, now. In late 2025, reports surfaced based on a peer-reviewed study from Chinese researchers at DFH Satellite Company, the country's biggest satellite maker. And the claims are staggering. These reports say that Chinese scientists have built and successfully ground-tested a prototype power system for a satellite that shatters this barrier. The numbers are scary. A system that can deliver 2.6 megawatts of pulsed power while keeping its timing accurate to just 0.63 microseconds. For comparison, most existing satellite power systems can barely produce 1 megawatt, with precision that isn't even in the same league. If these ground tests prove repeatable in space, it means Chinese researchers may have solved the core problem that has kept particle beam weapons on the drawing board. So, what would this actually mean? Militarily, it's simple. You can't be number one on Earth if you're number two in space. For decades, the United States has built its global military power on a foundation of orbital dominance. Its huge network of GPS satellites for navigation and targeting, its constellations of communication satellites for command and control, and its spy satellites for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or ISR, are the backbone of American power. It's the nervous system of the modern U.S. military, a weapon that could instantly and undetectably wipe out these critical assets would be a total game-changer. Unlike a traditional anti-satellite missile that you can track from the moment of launch, a particle beam travels at nearly the speed of light. There's no warning, by the time you realize you're a target, the attack is already over. Senior US Space Force officials have been openly warning about China's goal of building a kill web designed to find and target American forces. They've stated for the record that China is developing a whole range of capabilities to blind and deafen the enemy by hitting its space assets. A working particle beam weapon would be the ultimate tool for that strategy. It could allow China to surgically pluck critical satellites from the US network, causing chaos and paralysis, and potentially disabling the US military's ability to respond in a crisis, like a conflict in the Indo-Pacific. This threat is exactly why the U.S. Space Force says its mission is now to achieve space superiority, which means not just protecting its own satellites, but also being able to deny an adversary's use of space. The race is on. Okay, but let's pump the brakes a bit, because this is the part most reports miss. While the news about this Chinese power system is alarming, it's based on reports from a single scientific paper. As of late 2025, there is no public, independently verified evidence from Western intelligence that confirms China has actually built, tested, and put a particle beam weapon into orbit. And it's not that simple. Military satellites aren't fragile consumer electronics. 
they're hardened with special shielding to survive the intense radiation of space. Whether a particle beam with these reported specs could reliably knock out a modern, hardened US military satellite is still a hot debate among experts. China, for its part, tells a very different story. Beijing argues that this kind of advanced power system has plenty of peaceful, dual-use applications. The same tech that could power a weapon could also drive next-generation ion thrusters for incredible satellite maneuverability, run advanced laser communication systems, or boost microwave remote sensing for things like weather forecasting. Is it a weapon in disguise, or a legitimate tech breakthrough that's just being seen through a worst-case scenario lens? We see this same issue with other technologies. For instance, the Jinan-1 satellite, sometimes wrongly linked to military goals, is actually a well-documented platform for quantum communication experiments, a technology for creating unhackable networks. China's official position is that it wants to prevent an arms race in space, not start one. But here's the bottom line. Regardless of whether China has a functional death ray in orbit today, the ambition itself is what's changing the game. Just by publishing this research, China is sending a clear signal of intent. They are no longer just trying to catch up in space, they're pushing the limits of what's possible, and at a speed that has clearly startled the Pentagon. And this isn't coming out of nowhere. China's anti-satellite missile test back in 2007 was a huge wake-up call. It destroyed one of its own weather satellites and created a massive, dangerous field of space debris that's still up there today. Since then, US military leaders have repeatedly warned about China's growing counter space arsenal. This includes everything from ground-based lasers that can dazzle satellite sensors, to co-orbital grappling satellites that could physically interfere with other spacecraft, to powerful jammers that disrupt communications. The US isn't just standing by. The Space Force is deploying its own new ground-based jamming systems, with names like Meadowlands and Remote Modular Terminal, designed to interfere with Chinese and Russian spy satellites. But these are mostly reversible effects. The debate now raging in defense circles is whether the US needs its own, hard-kill, offensive weapons to create a real deterrent. The mere existence of research into technologies like this particle beam power system forces a response. It speeds up the new arms race, pushing both sides to develop not only tougher satellites, but also their own offensive weapons. The choices made in Washington and Beijing in the next few years will decide if space becomes an active war zone. The era of space as a peaceful sanctuary, untouched by earthly conflicts, is over. It is now, as the US Space Force itself calls it, a warfighting domain. The reports on China's potential particle beam technology represent a terrifying leap forward in that story. While the weapon itself might still be more theory than reality, the tech race it represents is very, very real. China's rapid advances, combined with its clear strategy to challenge US dominance, have set the stage for a new, high-stakes competition in the final frontier. The real question is no longer if weapons will be a part of space, but what kind of weapons, and what rules will govern their use. The future of global stability might just depend on how we answer that. So what do you think? Are these reports of a Chinese superweapon a credible threat that could end American dominance, or is it just fear-mongering to justify a bigger military budget? Let me know your analysis in the comments below. If you found this deep dive insightful, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We'll keep tracking the developments in space and what they mean for all of us down here on Earth. Thanks for watching.